It is here, ladies and gentlemen, how to write copy for cold email. I've put off making this video for quite literally 14 months, probably a little longer than that actually, since the start of my YouTube channel, but it's time to explain how to write email copy. A video that you probably are salivating at the mouth for. You probably aren't actually salivating, but if you are, then you should go and see a doctor. Um, but you might be a little excited for this one. Um, now, spoiler alert, I'm not giving you a piece of copy. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to teach you to fucking think, right? People don't want to think these days, but I'll tell you that thinkers win, right? So if I want to help you win, I'm not going to just give you a fish, I want to teach you to fish, right? I want to give you a fishing rod and a fishing manual and you're going to go out and you're going to do the work yourself. Now, that's not because I don't know how to do it, it's because if you don't know how to do it and I just give you something that I've created, then you haven't created it, which means you, you, I haven't exposed the wiring that allows you to arrive at a conclusion so you can do it yourself. I would rather give you the knowledge. Now, if you don't want, if you're here for like a little shiny piece of copy that you can copy and paste that works for a few months and then just doesn't work anymore, then keep searching, man. But if you want to understand some nice little frameworks that will actually massively improve your copywriting ability, get any more responses, more meetings and, you know, all that good stuff that comes with that, then stick around. I've got some points on my trusty pen and paper here and I'm gonna teach you what I know about cold email copy, right? Now, first things first, the most important thing, um, well, before I dive into the most important thing, let me explain who I am. My name's Charlie. Why should you trust me when it comes to copywriting? Well, fortunately enough, I've been able to use cold email to scale two businesses, an agency to seven figures and a coaching business to multi seven figures. And now I help other people build and scale cool businesses through attraction channels such as cold email. The most important thing to do with cold email is the prospect. Lesson numero un. That is the most important thing, your prospect. Understanding your prospect and who you are reaching is more important than anything, right? Because if you don't understand your prospects and who they are and what they want to see and what they want to read, then you're never going to write stuff that's in alignment with them. So the first thing to do when you're writing copy is don't write what you want to write. Write what the prospect wants to read. This is the, the thing that most people just completely fuck about the gate, is they write what they think they should write. But you're not your prospect and you never have been and never will be, and so you won't know what the person wants to read. And it's your job to understand your prospects so well that you actually understand them better than they understand themselves. And when you can accomplish that, you can just type some words and then you can make a shitload of money. And that's what we're able to do with Imperium. Um, that's the first thing, right? So how do you understand your prospect? Well, you have to know like where they hang out and you have to kind of like Trojan horse your way into their existence. So if you're working with dentists, then go and find out where dentists hang out. Go to dentist conventions. Just live and breathe the life of a dentist and don't actually perform surgery on people. It probably wouldn't be very healthy for anyone, but you really have to just, you know, pick up everything. Like, go and watch YouTube videos on how to run a dentistry practice and just consume every piece of knowledge you have to do with your niche and go to the places where your niche are going to go to find information about how to run their business and just constantly be on and i'm not just saying like go and join a facebook group of dentists and then just read through the posts no you have to commit to doing this for like years now the reason that i've been able to grow my agency coaching business and my coaching coaching business right the irony is there um is because i've been an agency and a coach and so i've lived that life and i understand them so i can write messages that help but that's the first thing right understand the prospect i know you might have a little pen and paper write it down um but then star it and then circle it and then Start and circle it again, and then start and circle it and draw a little penis next to it so you remember that it's important. I don't know why I said that, but anyway. Um, right, here's the second point. The best copy is a good offer, okay? The best copy is a good offer. If you have a good offer, then you don't need to worry about copywriting. You can just send the offer, and that will do all the talking for you. That's the key. The, like, you don't have to write any copy. You just write your offer. That's what we do with most of our... Like seriously, that's exactly how we book appointments through cold email. And it's exactly how we book appointments through cold messaging is we don't even bother with any fancy shit. We just say, hey, John, insert offer here. You open to talking and that's it. And so like what you'll find is it doesn't matter how good your copywriting skills are. If you've got a shit offer, nobody's really going to care. You can do anything fancy. You can read any book on psychology. You can do anything you want to try and get your copy as good as possible. But... It's kind of like at the end of the day, if like it's kind of like imagine that you're advertising an actual piece of human feces. 
It doesn't matter how good you are at advertising, nobody's gonna buy the feces, right? It's just not gonna happen. So if you're selling shit, then it doesn't matter how you try and dress the shit, when someone buys it, they're gonna be like, this is shit, give me back my money. And you'll be like, no, then they'll throw the shit at you and then you'll be quite upset. That's what happens to most people who aren't very good at what they do. So then you might have this thing of being like, well, Charlie, like, okay, um, well, how do I create a good offer? I don't think I can offer a guarantee or I don't think I can deliver this or I don't think I can actually do this. I can't really promise anything crazy. Well, then what we find is your problem is not a copywriting problem. Your problem is a service delivery problem. Ta-da, like that's usually how it works. When people come to me and they say, Charlie, save my business with a piece of copy, it almost always comes down to the offer. And then they're like, well, I can't quite offer that. And I'm like, well, why not? And they're like, because I can't do it. And I'm like, so the reason your business is not growing is not because you don't have the right piece of copy, but it's because you can't actually deliver on anything. You're not good at what you do. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because recognizing that and becoming aware and cognizant of that discrepancy or lack of skill is the first step towards improving it. But understand that like most people are just on there, sort of on the hunt, like, oh, I want this copy or this subject line or this message will save my business. Like as soon as someone starts asking me like, hey, can you like give me your copy? Or can you like write this copy for me? Or can you, can, all I need is one piece of email copy and my entire business will be fixed. Then I know they're fucked because it's not, it's never about the copy. It's always about the offer and communicating the offer. And the only way to communicate a good offer is to be able to actually deliver on it and then it just comes down to the fact that they have no idea what they're doing with service delivery and they couldn't actually deliver anything, right? So just be aware of that. But if we have ticked both those boxes, you understand the prospect and you've got a good offer, now it's time to actually start getting into the nuts and bolts. Subject line. What subject line should you use? It's really easy. It's just their name and then just like question or query or thing for or note for, like note for business name or... Um, information for business owner by right, insert business owner with their name obviously you do not want your subject line to be anything but something that gets them to open and by open I mean it needs to be vague as soon as your subject line is like more members for John or more customers for Ben or um, you know more jacks for Jill right you're, you're you've just lost before they're just gonna like click it now they're not gonna click it they're gonna delete it the reason we want to have standard subject lines is because if the prospect just deletes the, that email, they're actually putting themselves at risk business. Dude, if I receive an email and the subject line is like information for Charlie Morgan, I'm opening that bad boy because it could be HMRC or the tax man trying to slap my ass for not paying something. Now, fortunately, I do pay my taxes on time, but you get my point. Like, you want your subject line, like the, 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 um, the purpose the subject line serves is to get them to open the email and nothing else. So you're not trying to sell them on anything except from the click on that first open line. It's kind of like when you're running ads and you have that sort of like first line before you have that ellipsis to, for the person to click see more. That first line should not be selling anything but the little three ellipses, right? The little three dots on the ellipsis. Um, so that's an important thing to note and realize. Now, so that's the subject line out of the way. Now, let's actually talk about the body of the copy. I've, I've noted that the, the, the offer is the main thing, but obviously you can't just go in and just write the offer. You have to be a little bit more polite. So the first thing you start with is, hi, first name. Simple, right? You don't want to get creative with this shit because you want to write an email in a format as if, it, as if you're sending it to a friend. Now, this is where most people go wrong. You want to break patterns. When your, pros your prospect, right, basically you're, okay, your prospect has a brain and their brain contains algorithms and these, these algorithms determine whether certain things happen and certain actions are taken without any conscious thought. So imagine for a second that you put your hand on a hot stove and an algorithm in your brain is going to be like pain, hand remove, without any conscious thought that's happening, right? Another example is if someone cold calls you and you pick up the phone and you know you hear this call center in the background and then they're like, oh, I've got this thing and you're just like, oh, hang up. There's no conscious thought between stimulus and response, right? It's just sort of like, it's a click word response in psychology. It's how it's known. An example of this in nature is um, robins, those little cute birds with their little um, orange bellies. They like, a, 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 like if a, if, another, if a robin enters another robin's territory, then the robin will like fucking dive bomb it and kamikaze it. But what, what they found is that when they put like a pile of orange feathers in the robin's territory, it will still dive bomb and kamikaze it. Now, how does a robin kamikaze pilot 
relate to cold email. Well, my point is that with your prospects, they have these clickware responses where if your email at first glance, algorithmically looks like a sales email, it'll be deleted straight away. It's kind of like the Robin, like it's gonna see like a shade of orange and just swoop down and just try and go for the neck, mate, right? It's the same process as your prospect opening an email and seeing anything that denotes like a pattern of like that they formed. So like when, and this is why I discourage people from using agency, marketing, media, Facebook ads, Google ads, SEO, any of this stuff, even guarantee right these days. You want to avoid pattern words that trigger the prospect's unconscious pattern recognition patterns in their algorithm that would lead to them deleting it. So the first step to copy is not what to write, but it's what to not write. So first of all, we all understand, well, you may not, but you should know this. You, you should understand not to write words like free and like instant or like prize or any of that crap because you're just gonna go to the spam box. But then before you actually think about what to write, you just have to know like what you shouldn't write. So as soon as you say, like as soon as the first line of your email is, hi John, I run a marketing agency. Bang, you're in the fucking deleted box, mate. Because do you know how many times John has received an email with the word marketing agency in it and how many times he's deleted it? Like his brain just like, it's kind of like just a, a bin. Like it just filters through stuff and it's just like, goodbye, keep, goodbye. And it just like, will scan an email and then make an immediate decision as to whether it should be deleted or be invested time into. So that's the, that's the main thing to know is that that's how prospects really go through their emails. And it's most email responses, or most email responses aren't, they don't really have much thought put into them. It's just like, I'm gonna delete it or I'm just gonna ignore it. I'm sure you get cold messages from people saying like, hey, um, like here's an example. I always get cold messages from people trying to sell VA services. And at the end, it's always like worth a chat, question mark. And then like, as soon as I see worth a chat, I'm like, because I know what it is. I just, I like my brain has just been able to synthesize enough of these patterns to then just like subconsciously just delete it and forget about it. Because your working memory is only so strong and it can only contain so much information and your brain has to be efficient. So it kind of just removes it. So that's that. Now, so you say hi, first name. So now we're at the, the first line, hi, first name. Now, the second line is important because this is how they're gonna, this sets the tone for the entire email. So we don't wanna just jump straight in for the kill. We want to basically explain that we have invested time in them. Now, what that means is we're just explaining like, I have taken a look at your business, right? Now, you're not gonna say it in simple forms because they might think you've got a learning disability if you say it in simple forms like that, because everyone says that. Um, what you want to say is something along the lines of like, my team and I have, Ex extensively researched in the certain brand name here and we are and then you can just go on to say like you know really confident we can help you or something like you want to just tell the person off the bat like hey john i've looked into you because then now he's like reading he's like his brain can't really categorize it he has not seen any of these weird buzzwords and stuff and so he's like okay they've looked at him, and then he's just sort of into the next line so first line hi person hi name second line you can say um, my team and I have blah, blah, blah. And then you want to try and do some sort of compliment. You don't want to overdo it. Like you, you see people who like compliment people for the weirdest things. It's like, hi, John, I, I really like the look of your gym. Come on, mate. Like, let's be a little bit more creative than that. Um, you can use a personalized first line if you want, but the problem with personalized first lines is nowadays everyone does them. So it kind of makes sense to not do them. So I've actually got a client of mine who will write like, um, hi, John. And then like, he'll put um, in brackets, I'm supposed to insert a personal line here, but I figured I'd save you the eye rolling compliment. Right? <laughs> it's just like, you know, like I, I helped him formulate that line and it seems to work well for him. So play around with it, that's the, that's, the, that's the second line. Then what you do is you explain your offer. So you say, I'm emailing you because, or the reason for this email, or I'm bothering you because, or you know something funny, just you try, try and engage them. Like, you know, just be ironic with it. Like I've, I've stolen your attention from your inbox because, Right, depending on your niche, you can get away with different levels of tonality. But I like to just sort of be a bit funny and creative, not to the point where you're like making a clown of yourself. Um, but you can sort of just come up with some tongue and cheek shit. Just be like, hey, John, um, we've taken a pretty good long look at your brand and we really like what we see. Reason for that is because, you know, blah, 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 blah. So then you basically go on to explain the offer. Now, I can't really help you with this because you're gonna be offering something completely different to me, but you want risk reversal, you want tangibility. These are the two main things. Tangibility is X in X over X amount of days or time frame, and um, reverse, re reverse, 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 
sounds like some sort of illness, doesn't it? Um, risk reversal is basically where you tell the person, hey, by the way, if it doesn't work, it's all on me and you ain't responsible for anything financially. If you don't make any money, don't worry. Um, you need to position that in a way that doesn't trigger spam box filters. Like you can't say like 100% guaranteed, but you need to come up with something creative. So one of my favorite lines is like, hey, John, um, insert like personalized first line thing here. I'm bothering you with this email because I got something I think you might like. Basically, I can get you more members. But the cool thing is I only eat what I kill. So if you don't get members, then I don't get paid. Not that I'm going to eat any of your members. Don't worry. Tongue in cheek. He moves on. He's laughing. The pattern is broken. It's, it's not like it's a normal email, right? Once we've done that, now it's time to start breaking some patterns even further because this is where most people really fuck it up. Then what people start doing is they start talking about the details of their company and all this bullshit. Like, so yeah, if you're looking to increase your revenue or if you're looking to acquire more clients and basically make more money and, and see this happen and like we've been doing this for these people and you know, after this amount of years in business, we've been able to build extensively. They don't fucking care, right? This is the secret is understand the prospect does not give two flying shits about you and your business. They only care about the offer and what you can do for them. And basically the fact that it doesn't cost them anything unless it works, right? They don't care that you've been in business for a certain amount of time. They don't care that you've done anything. Now that might come into influence when you're trying to close them, but they won't care in the initial response. They're not going to sit there and basically like watch you just jerk your ego off for like four seconds in their mind because they have to read it and then they're just like, why is this person telling me this stuff? I don't care. So you want to then, following on from the offer, you can either include a loom. I like to do a loom. You can include a screenshot of their website. You can basically include a screenshot of their LinkedIn profile. You could just have a little evergreen video of yourself or just a picture of you with your thumbs up with like holding up like, hi, John, this, this is it for you. So here's an example. You, you could be like, by the way, John, I know you get blasted by people left, right and center trying to sell you stuff. Here's a picture of me and you just to confirm. And you could, I wouldn't do this actually because it'd be fucking weird, but you print up a picture of them and hold it up. I've done, I'm not condoning that. I haven't tested it. It'd probably be a bit weird, but you can get creative. The key here is creativity, right? Creativity. Don't just copy what everyone else is doing. When you come across and stumble across your own method and you build your own way of doing things, you develop a disgusting advantage. Warren Buffett calls this a, a moat in business. You, you have your castle and you need something to protect it. And your moat is like something unique to your business that only you have and you've developed. And so most people, they try and find like copy and they're not digging a moat. They're just, if anything, like trying to cross other people's moats, it doesn't work. So like if you want to create a moat and create security in your business, then create a proprietary cold outreach strategy that nobody else has duplicated or emulated and you'll forever drink from a clean sea, right? Um, or a clean pond, whatever that phrase is. Um, so that's that's that part. Now, it should, you should never talk about yourself. You should always talk about your team, right? So what I mean by this is don't say I or don't say me. Say my team and I or we or my partners and I or um, the team over at my company, right? Because we want to talk as a collective, not as an individual, because it gives this implied authority. Get to the point is another point I've got here, which is ironic for me recording an 18 minute video of rambling. The, by the point, I mean like, you don't need fancy introductions. You don't need to introduce yourself. You don't really need anything but hi, offer, want to call, right? And like, you, you just want to try and like, when someone sends me email copy to review, the first thing I do is look at what I can remove. Because it's almost always you can cut the email in half. Like if you look at your cold email copy right now, just I guarantee you can cut it in half and it will give you twice the results. Like, you know, we get clients write copy and then they come just like, what do you think of this copy? How, how can I improve it? Or how can I make changes to it? And then I'm like, well, we're just going to remove a bunch of shit. So the first and most important skill to have is just removal and being able to just cut the shit out that they don't need. And um, that's a good principle to abide by, right? You want your cold emails to be snappy like readable and digestible in like under five to 10 seconds. And then the person can decide consciously whether or not they want to entertain a conversation. Um, the other thing is like, don't have like a crazy footer, right? So you know when like people, so by footer I mean signature in your email. Um, you don't want to have an all singing and dancing footer. You don't, signature, you don't want to have your social links in there. If you're trying to get someone to take one action of booking a call, why would you give them other options and other things to do? So like, I don't get this with emails, right? Oh, there's no one's beeping at me. I don't get this with emails where you want the prospect to take an action. 
right? Getting them to open the email is hard enough. Getting them to try and book a call is hard enough itself. Why would you then be like, hey, check out my LinkedIn profile? What the fuck, man? Like give them one path to travel on, right? And then if they open your website, then they're then before you know it, they're away. Because if you're, if you're like, oh, if you want to check out our case studies, go to this website. And then you insert your website. And then all you've done there is you've taken them to Chrome where they've now got 10 other tabs open and they've got, now you've just lost them and they're gone, right? You just need to basically be concise and keep it all in text form with no bullshit, right? Same with like attachments and stuff, don't bother. Just keep it simple, right? Everything should be clickable. Different story if you're doing a Loom link, right? But the cool thing about Loom is it's like, it's sort of like they cut the click the video. So it's like, this is this action. So open the email, click this video, book a call, right? But if it's just like, go to this website or I actually wrote a blog on LinkedIn about this, check out my blog fuck off, mate, it just won't work, right? I'm not saying fuck off to anyone that does that, but I'm just saying that's what the prospect will say in their mind when they see it. Like, I just can't be bothered to read a blog. Like, you know, understand that people treat their inboxes as to-do lists. People treat their inboxes as to-do lists. So you must write your email in a way that it can be done, right? Long form copy. I mean, it might work. I haven't tested it too much, but I found that like emails that can just be tended to, read, digested, and declined or like in explored immediately perform the best because like when you're a business owner and when you're busy your email is kind of this thing that you don't really want to have to handle but you've, you're addicted to it right so you'll you kind of have this love-hate relationship with it where it gives you this this sort of dopamine because you don't know what's going to come through but then also you want to focus on your business but you kind of can't stop both of them so you need to find a balance between these two categories where you're not annoying people with long form copy that takes ages to, to digest but then also like you're not being like too aggressive with the way you email people. So when I email people, like I'm just sort of straight to the point and they're able to just get it done. Like the ad, people will not spend more than like 10 seconds in an email. If you if your email takes more than 10 seconds to sort of scan through, then you've, you've lost. But likewise, if it can just be scanned in two seconds, then you'll also be lost. So you need to find a balance in, in length and you know the, the, the visual form of it. Um, so that's that. I think that's, that's the main stuff. Um, Keep it short. Your offer should really be your copy. Break the pattern with something unusual, like a picture of you and them. Don't actually do that, but like, you know, break the pattern. Just try and think of ways that you can break the pattern. You could be like, by the way, John, I know you get emails from loads of people. So here's a picture of me up a mountain so you can see that I'm in fact a real person. And there's just you and a mountain. I don't know if that would work or not, but my point is that like, people can't box that shit into their algorithmic, like, um, went into the algorithm of delete or keep. When they see a picture of someone up a mountain, they're like, what, why is someone, what, what? That makes sense, I don't understand. But then like, it forces them to have to digest the information. And, and honestly, like, or ingest the information, right? Which is reading it. And often with cold email, just by getting them to ingest, they will digest. And digest is when they start to take action on it, right? Um, we don't want to know what happens after digesting, of course. Um, so that's that. Um, now, the other thing to close out your cold email, you want to ask for the idea of a call, not a call itself. So would you be open to potentially exploring this? Or do you think it would be a good idea to explore this? Or by on the off chance this is good for your business, would you be open to a demo? We don't just say, do you want to have a call? You say, would you like, to would you like the idea of a call? Because then if they say yes, it's much easier to agree to the idea of something than to agree to the thing itself. But in turn, they're basically exactly the same thing, right? So if someone agrees to the idea of a call, they're actually agreeing to a call, but it's easier for them unconsciously to agree to something or the idea of a premise than to actually do the premise itself, right? So that's a little hack that I found is really useful. Um, I might make some more videos on copy because I've got lots of other tips and stuff um, that I could roll out in the future. But for the purpose of this video being, you know, less than half an hour long, I think you've probably got enough to work with for now. Um, but that's everything. I wanted to just framework out this for you. Like I said, we're not giving away like a little, little fucking PDF or something, because the problem with that is it's like, I could give you guys some copy, but then everyone will start using it and then it won't work. Right. And that's, that doesn't give you an advantage. It gives you a temporary short term boost, but it doesn't give you a long term like um, ejection. Right. And that's. I said ejection, don't worry. It doesn't give you a long-term ejection. Um, you, and I don't want to just give you like short-term little wins. I want to give you like long-term progresses. 
So um, that's everything from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can like, comment and subscribe if you have anything to add. Please do consider subscribing if you found it useful. And um, I will see you in the next video. And if you want to learn more about how we can help you acquire clients through cold messaging and cold methods, just click the first link in the description. It will take you to a funnel and I think you'll like what you see. Talk to you soon.